On this episode, we work hard. Let's jump into those code minds. We party hard. Do you remember? And we grind those tokens. This is the token mindset. <laughs> Hot. Hi everybody, this is Christian from LazyDevs Academy. Welcome to the Advanced Schmap Tutorial. And today's episode is gonna be a little bit of a housekeeping episode. There's a bunch of little things that piled up over the uh, last few episodes that we did, some bugs and so forth. We're gonna try to get down to the bottom of them. And another thing that we're gonna do today is we're gonna just think about where we're going with the current phase of the development because we kind of like did the first goals, but what are the next steps? There's multiple paths we can take and I want to take a look at them. Let's take a look at the master plan. All right, so here we are at master plan. We are currently working towards our second goal and it says like figure out the gameplay. Um, I, that was a bit of a hastily uh, form, for, formulation of that goal. Um, uh, let's 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 have it have some basic gameplay. We are not figuring out the gameplay in the sense that we're gonna <laughs> nail down the entire gameplay of the thing. There's a bunch of systems that we need in order to actually work on the gameplay, like you know, enemy behavior and so forth. We want to have some basic gameplay, um, and so there's some things that we are we're talking about which are good. Moving enemies, enemy bullets, collisions. Uh, how do we conserve sprite space? This is like a general concern, and we kind of like already covered did some did some work good work on that one and generally I uh, want to arrive at the great wall where we can start thinking about the systems that we need to set up in order to get to the next phase but first we need to arrive there um, let us let us split these goals into smaller goals that are more manageable this is generally something that you want to do whenever you don't quite know how to approach something um, it's probably that the goal is too big and then it's better to split it in small into smaller steps that uh, each one of those steps can be actually manageable so for example moving enemies i want to i want to spawn an enemy um i want the enemy to move somehow and then also um, we have collisions. That's kind of like part of the thing. And we have bullets. So um, I want the enemy to shoot a bullet. And then I want to, want to be able to hit the enemy. Ah. Uh, on that part of it itself, but I'm gonna write it down. I want the enemy to explode. Eh? And also I want to die if I get hit by bullet. By bu bullet. See, this is kind of like parts of what we have this defined as the basic gameplay. I just want to just like move around and do something in the game, not just like fly and shoot at nothing, right? I just want to have something. And this is not gonna be the final system i just want to have something there and want to start something to kind of like start to understand the problem that we are approaching we are approaching the problem <laughs> don't get me wrong we are approaching the problem there's a great wall but before we get there we need to kind of like dip our toes into the water and these kind of like are good steps to dip dip those toes um so we're gonna have that's gonna be all about enemy bullets and collisions that's good um yeah 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 so I guess uh, I can, oh, uh, I can because it says I want on the top here. So we can save some tokens by not repeating the I want. You know, the entire world is tokens. This is the token mindset. <laughs> Okay, good. So these are these are this is a good good guidance generally. Where are we going next? Oh, by the way, when we're saying uh, how to conserve sprite space, so we kind of already did a lot of work in this regard. We kind of established our system that conserves the um, sprite space. That's good. There are some questions about that system that we need to still uh, answer, um, which is um, we need a, a tool to create my sprites. Um, 
Yeah, and that's something that a lot of people are actually looking forward to. We're gonna develop a lot of tools, and this is a kind of like a big project though. So um, I'm not sure if we're gonna start with this right away, but we definitely in this phase we want to create a tool that allows us to create the my sprites. Mm, and also, how do we deal with animations? Question mark. And also, um, uh, how do we compress to the Erase, question mark. This is kind of like all part of the sprite space compression project that we are already engaging with. Um, and I think the gr arrive at the Great Wall, that's kind of like part of the actual overall goal, right? This is not a step that we need to do that or that's separate from the other steps. This is kind of like what we're trying to go for. Kind of like rethinking about where we're going. And it's okay, it's okay to reform, reformulate your goals as you go. Uh, because sometimes, you know, you write things down and you're maybe not in the right mindset, you haven't fully grasped the problem. And as you continue, you get a better understanding of the problems that you're working on. Cool, so we split things into smaller steps. And now we can copy this into our Pico 8 program and start working on these things. So load cow shmup. Um, and then I'm gonna paste it in here. Brrr, lo lots of text, lots of text. Let's 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 do the let's do the comments. That's good. Excellent, 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 excellent. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so the, I'm gonna call these goals. Kind of like separate from the to do. To do is kind of like very specific things, but these are kind of like goals. These are milestones that we need to hit. Um, there's like uh, some some ideas, I guess, here, like, like color animate particles. That's probably not sure if we're gonna do this today. Um, centralized animation system. That's actually something that we already hear. Um, how do we deal with animation? So that's, that's kind of like already something in our goals. We can get this out here. There's a scroll teleport bug. I want to do this today. Uh, redo the X scroll. We can also re redo the X scroll today. I think we're we are already set up for that one. Uh, better better sp split for um, my sprites. This is actually also again how do you compress it to there to the array? That's also part of of um, what we set up there. So we can remove this. There's one more thing. People in the comments suggested something, and I, uh, a big shout out to Turtle Quitty and King Mandrake. Um, there were people criticizing and or second guessing my choices when I did the weight thing, this part here, that whole thing. Um, uh, they wrote, those two people wrote me some uh, cool ideas on how to maybe uh, make this a bit more compact and more efficient. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. I'm down with those ideas. So let's uh, put this down here. Uh, rethink weight for particles. Okay, good. Plan finished, let's start working on those things. All right, so the first question, the first question is this here, how do we compress uh, to the array? That's something that was part of the um, doggy zone. And so we want to take this whole chunk here, that's 136 tokens. That's a whole bunch of, of tokens, right? Just like for this, this data here. And we want to compress it down so it's just, you know, it's less tokens. We already did that with one dimensional sprites, which sprites that are just like a sequence of numbers. Um, we're using the split function. But this is a bit of a different animal. This my SPR array is an array of arrays, so a two dimensional array basically. So it's not just a sequence of numbers, it's multiple sequences of numbers. And so how do we do deal with that? Well, I have a tool for that. And this is gonna be a bit of a copy and paste, but I'm gonna walk you through this this time around. If you watched the uh, pork-like tutorial, I think I've used a similar system there. Bam, copy and paste. <laughs> this is one of the times where I actually finished the owl and I'm not gonna redraw the owl. Um, so this is a function that I use in a lot of my programs. It's called, I call this split 2D. Um, what it does is it takes a string, S, and then what it does here is, um, first of all, it, it splits the string. It takes this, the spring and splits it, uses the split function. But it uses the split function in a very particular manner. Um, uh, it actually has some additional parameters to the split. Uh, first parameter is this, this here, this uh, pipe symbol, the vertical 
vertical line, that's a pipe symbol. Um, so the second parameter in the split function, uh, in this second parameter, you can define the character that splits, the character that splits the individual entries in a string, in an array. Um, so uh, usually that's a comma, right? Usually that's a comma when we split, for example, this array, the split function will look for the commas and will take all the stuff between the commas and put it in its own entry in an array. But in this case, we are redefining what character we are looking for. And we are no longer looking for the commas. We're looking for the pipes now. And then this false at the end, this third parameter false, um, that is something that if that's set to false, um, and then that means that the split function will not automatically convert to uh, strings into numbers if it's, if, if it's a number. Uh, I think so. Let me look this up real quick. Yeah, so here uh, we have convert to numbers. Uh, when convert to numbers is true, numerical tokens are stored as numbers and it defaults to true. So we have to specifically say false as the third parameter um, as for the function not to convert these entries into numbers automatically. Right, so our array will get, um, our, our string will get converted into an array. Uh, but we are not looking for commas, but we're looking for pipes f first. Okay, so what then? We Now we have like an array full of strings. Um, and then we're gonna go, <laughs> this is a good, this is a bit of a, <laughs> this is, oh. um, so this is called a KV in pairs loop. Uh, we, it's kind of like familiar, it's a relative of the four in all loop. So we have four, um, four V in all, array right something like do right we had we had that, that before um, that will just loop through the array and uh, every time it repeats the uh, the loop um, v will get set to the next entry in an array so it will just like basically everything that's inside this loop everything that's inside everything that's inside will get repeated for each element of the ar array Right? It's kind of like an easy way to do some kind of operation on every element of an array. This does the same, the KV in pairs, that does the same thing. The only thing that is different is uh, instead of just having one value for each of the element in an entry, we have two values. We have the actual value, that's the same thing as here, but we also have the K. The K is the key. So the key is kind of like the index of a entry in an array. So, you know, in an array, let's say we have an array that is like, let's, let's do an example. One, two, th well, let's go, go A, B, B, C, right? That's, that's, that is an array. Uh, and let's call this foo. <laughs> um, so foo square brackets I equals A, right? Entry number one is A, and the one is the key, right? So if we're looping through this with a KV pairs, like in the first, in the first loop, K. Let's do like, let's, let's just look. Let's do it like like this. Yeah. In the first loop, K is going to be one, and V is going to be A, and in the second loop, K is going to be two, and V is going to be B. And this third loop, K is going to be three, and B is going to be C, right? We, it's, it's basically the same as here, but we have some more values to play with, and that allows us to do some cool things later on. Um, this can be also quite often a replacement for them, because we like to use the four in four I equals one to something and do, right? We, the four next loop, we like to do this loop. Well, this can quite often be a replacement for this. Um, it, I think it is, uh, token-wise, it's kind of like I think the same or a bit more efficient, I'm not sure. Yes, so there's a new loop that we're using here, but again, it's kind of like something that we already used before. It's, it's a more, more flexible version of the loop that we're already using all the time. So what are we doing with the K and V here? Well, <laughs> Oh man, this is this is a cool code here. Um, so we take the value that we have. This we have this array with a bunch of strings, and we split it again. We split it again, and then we put it at the key 
of where we took the value from in the first place. So we replace all of the entries that we already had in our array with splitted versions of them. We basically loop through an array and uh, replace all of the strings with splitted version of that split string. So we kind of like run split two times. That's kind of what we're trying to do. Um, so generally, how do we use this? Well, um, the string will look something like a comma b comma c pipe one comma two comma three pipe sixty six ninety nine uh, fifty nine. Right, and so when we do a split two D of that, what we get is we're gonna get a big array, and inside that array we're gonna have something like a, b, c, comma, one two three, comma, sixty six. No, oh, fifty five. Sixty six. 99, 59, nice. And if you uh, have any ideas on how to make it even more compact, it's 28 tokens. Uh, or there might be a, even ways of making it even more compact. Do let me know. Anyway, so it's time to use the 2D splits. So we're gonna do something like my SPR equals 2D uh, sp split 2D, split 2D. That's the name of it, right? Split 2D. Split 2D. Uh, and then and now it's time to take this whole thing and convert it. Um, I'm gonna keep this around. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep it around for now. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I I I, I, we, we, I just want to keep it around. I'm just like a bit nervous. Uh, and all this stuff, um, let's call this my SPR2. I, I want to keep this around because this is a bit more editable. And as long as we don't have um, the editor um, for these my sprite things, we, we probably want to have a version of this where we can just quickly edit it. For now, I just want to see if this works. So, um, right, we're going to save, run, edit works. No problem at all. It just works. Um, so we have kind of have two versions of it. So we still have the old version, which is, you know, again, 136 token. The new version is five tokens. Ah, yes. Um, now, granted, we have five tokens plus the uh, 28 tokens here. So we're like 30, 33 tokens. But still, the 33 tokens is still more efficient than 136 tokens. We just saved, we have just like 100 tokens for free, just like that. Again, I will still keep the my SPR 2 versions around. Uh, I'm gonna switch it around, so it's, it's uh, we're using now the, the, this other version here, because I might get some more sprites, uh, and until we have the sprite editor, uh, we are gonna have to work with this version for now. Later on, I'm gonna switch fully to this uh, more compact version. Cool, cool, cool. La right, let's do some cleanup. Um, so, yeah, we finished this one part. We do have a way to compress 2D arrays now. That's that's done. Now let us uh, think about um, scroll teleport bug. There was a bug with the scrolling, and I don't know what the problem is, but we're gonna try to fix this for now. Let us let us because we had like this. In, we turned this into like this dark water style. I wanna I wanna turn it back to the normal water. There we go. And then let's run this. Does that look good? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So there was some problem. There was some problem when X scroll was too high. I have an inkling of what the problem is. Let's just first replicate the problem. If X scroll is 63, it still works fine. It's fine. If it's 64, it's fine. No, it's X scroll. Oh, and, and this, that's not the, the, the thing that we want to tweak. We want to tweak this one. Yeah, if it's set to 63, it works. The scroll value, it works. But if we set it to 64, it, it, it glitches out. 
Um, so clearly, well, first of all, let's see where it glitches out. Um, this is a live debugging. I don't know what the problem is. I'm doing it live. This is how I go about debugging a problem. So attempt to perform a arithmetic on a local signum, which is a nil value. Uh, and this is in uh, the update function, update 60, uh, in line zero. Here, segnum. Uh, I think uh, what we are getting here is that... Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So what I think what happens is we're trying to get a segment from uh, from the map, from our map, we, from a list of segments. We're spawning a new segment. We're trying to get one from the, the map. And I think we run out of segments. I think that's what happens. I have an inkling that the problem is with this here. So this is the sequ sequence where we delete all segments. I'm gonna, I'm gonna comment this out for a second. And now it works. Um, let me put this now on 200. Yeah, now, see, now it works. So um, the bug is, I have the inkling, I have an idea of what the bug is. So if we set the scroll to a very high number, that means we kind of like scroll already a couple of segments down, but at the beginning of the game, there's no segments in the curse sec array. That's the, that's the array that contains all of the segments that we show, should show on the screen. So um, the program realizes, okay, we need to get some more segments from the map. It gets a new segment from the map, puts it in our Cursex array, and then immediately we're checking, okay, is there, are there any segments that are supposed, that are that we already scrolled past, that are too low on the screen so that we shouldn't see them? And yes, they are, <laughs> because we scrolled so far already that we already scrolled even past some segments. So we spawn a new segment, but that segment is already uh, b below the screen. And then we immediately delete it. And then we have an empty array again. And then this process just keeps repeating. We spawn a new segment and immediately deleting it. Spawn a new segment, delete, uh, deleting it immediately. So um, yeah, that's obviously not good. Um, something we could do here is, I wonder if that uh, helps if, um, Hashtag cursex is greater than one and so we only delete it We only delete old segments if we have already more than two for let's for example because like on our in our background it Needs to have at least two segments to fill the screen, right? So if there's less than two segments in our cursex array, that means something went wrong. Anyways, so this is done the scroll teleport bug is finished, and now we can actually, uh, you know, start scrolling at, uh, you know, in the forest somehow somewhere. Let's 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 go three hundred. Yeah. Okay, I think it's time. I think it's time to redo the X scroll. I think I think I think ah uh, I need to I need to ah uh, let's jump into those code mines. Remember this. Whew. Yeah, yeah, I do remember. Do you remember? Okay, so let us remove the X scroll for now. And let's just say X scroll equals uh, zero. L let us gain control of this. Okay, good. Um, We definitely want to mid this, right? So we're gonna go zero comma maximum should be. Oh, I did it at between zero and one, right? Yeah, that makes sense. And then I multiply it by minus sixteen, right? Or I guess sixteen. Well, uh, uh, this is kind of like direction thing. If it's minus, then it's scrolling against the movement of the ship. If it's positive, it's scrolling with the ship. Um, yeah. For now, let's go px divided by 128. We just take the position of the ship, we divide it by 128, and then we're gonna see what happens. See, this is, now that the, the background is scrolling with the ship, but it should be scrolling against the ship. And so yeah, this is good. Well, not quite, um, because again, I said, 
Uh, let me let me debug this. Let me debug this. Um, debug one equals x scroll. Uh, let's 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 just to do two x scroll. So it's in the middle. It was eight. That's good. Here at this corner. Um, yeah, whatever. Here it's zero. Okay, here here it's zero, but we're already kind of like already off screen, right? It should, should be zero around here. It feels like here should we should be at zero. And then equally, um, 16 is reached here. Well, actually, yeah, yeah, no, okay. Uh, this is the this is kind of like around the other edge of this chronic. And again, it doesn't feel quite right. So we need to do add some some kind of like dead zones on the edges. Uh, something I maybe I want to also debug here is I don't want to debug um, px just so we know roughly at what positions we need to do these things. So let me try it again. So it feels like here um, should be should be the end. So um, so eight. So like px minus eight. Now it's, it's just not moving at all. Uh, I think we need to do like a uh, order of operations thing here. Right, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's no longer scrolling when I'm on the, but maybe eight is a little bit too, too little. Let's, let's, go, let's go with 10 so we have a little bit of a, so it's, it stops scrolling earlier, you know? Yeah, this feels more natural. I don't want it to stop exactly when we hit the edge. I want to maybe st stop scrolling already a little bit earlier, you know? Yeah, this seems okay. This seems okay. So we'll still stop scrolling here. I can still move further, but you know. And then on the other side, we need, um, so immediately because we did mean a minus 10, we have to divide by a smaller number, right? Yeah. So let's see. Yes. And then we're gonna divide by even smaller number because we need the same leeway on the other side. So this is where we are at zero. Now we are the x scroll is zero, and we are haven't touched the the left side yet. And now we're gonna go to the other side, and we're already at sixteen. And again, we haven't touched the right side yet. Does it feel good? Yeah, that feels about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that that's good. That's good. I think this is good for now. We're gonna see if there's any problems cropping up with this later on. If there are, then we're gonna address them. But for now, I'm gonna call this finished. Um, I'm dreading the color animate particles in draw. I'm dreading this a little bit. But maybe uh, we gonna uh, it's gonna get easier when we rethink the weight for particles. Uh, we have this function called weight. And that function will basically, or the property of a particle called weight, and that is kind of like a countdown timer that counts down to zero, and when it reaches zero, the particle gets spawned. Um, act, no, or not spawned, they, it actually appears, because until it's counting down, it's kind of invisible. And some people suggested that uh, we might be, um, we might um, uh, merge some functions that we already have. It's kind of like weird that uh, in our particle function, we do the countdown. And then we also count how a, how old the particle is later on once the particle is visible. That's kind of like we're we're doing like we're keeping track of the timing of the particle with two different variables. We could merge them into one variable, and that allows us to do a bit more efficient code. Um, so, for example, we could have negative age, and if the age is negative, the particle won't do anything. And only when the particle, uh, when, the, um, when the age becomes positive, only then we're gonna start animating the particle and doing stuff, stuff like that. Um, I'm, I'm eager to try this. I'm, I'm kind of like interested in trying this, but maybe not in this Kaushmap, Kaushmap version. Let's go to the per prototypes. Uh, let's go to load below, and, or maybe expl, expl, let's go level expl. Uh, the reason why I want to maybe do this here because I can step through uh, a particle explosion here, and that that might be um, so we can ac actually see maybe something something changing, right? Um, so I'm gonna actually comment out the spark blast, and actually comment out 
all of the grapes. So we only have like the initial flash and we're gonna tweak the timing of the initial flash, right? Something like this. And now I can see exactly. So if we put a weight equals two, oh. So I'm gonna spawn one, two, three. Two, we're waiting two frames now. I want to now replicate the same uh, behavior when we go h minus two. So um, we're gonna go p, because some particles might not have any h, right? So we're gonna go p h equals um, p dot h or zero. And I'm gonna go p dot h plus equals one. And then I'm gonna go if p dot h smaller than smaller or equal zero then return. Something like this. Yeah, and then you can remove all of this. And then we're gonna now we don't need this anymore because it's kind of like the same thing that we have here, so we don't need this anymore. Um this is interesting. Mm -hmm. See, we have this thing that is triggered when the particle is spawned or at h0, but now we're gonna skip this because that's where we're advancing the age of the R particle. So that's why what I'm, I'm a bit concerned about this. Let's first fix the indentation because, so with shift tab, you can move the indentation lower and then there's an end because our all particle um, code was in like one big if statement and um, yeah those those have a tendency to kind of like backfire on you so maybe it's a good idea to just return from this function immediately right so now we are advancing the age of the particle twice you know what Could do something like this. And then here's the actual particle code. And this is just age or age and weight, right? Something like this. Now also I want to do something else. When we are drawing the particles, we're gonna go if p dot h smaller, uh, greater than zero. Now the question is whether the particle should be visible at h zero at h one. That's kind of like something that is a bit, this one of like start counting with zero problem comes up in programming all the time. Let's do this like this and let's see, let's see if this works. Okay, so now the particle was visible a bit too late. Um, so let us make it so, make it so that it's like this. Okay, and so now it was one, two, now it's visible. And now it's turning. Okay, this is this is correct now. So this was this if statement. The if statement didn't show the particle early enough. Now it shows the particle early enough. Um, and it's everything is being animated correctly. I'm just a bit worried here. What about this? We don't need this that early. We can we can put it here as well. Or actually, let's put this inside here. Yeah, this is good. Now we have like two if statements here. We check for the h equals zero here and, and here as well. That's something that I don't like. But I guess there's just no other way of doing this, right? Hmm. Some people will probably let me know if there's something completely wrong with this. Okay, okay, that seems good. That seems good. Um, let's Let's bring back everything and see if we can and make all the other things work as well. So um, first the spark blasts. 
Um, so we have a weight here, but now it's no longer weight, but h equals minus e weight. And then let's run this. By the way, you see this problem that we kind of fixed it in a, in a main program already. Okay, so let us do a grape. Bring back the grapes. The grapes. Um, mm, 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 right here. So instead of weight, we're going to go h and go minus e weight. h minus e weight. Okay. Still, still looks okay. All right, I'm gonna save this and then I'm gonna copy this stuff into our main program. Right, so I just realized that we actually never checked if H0 works. Um, well, we're gonna see that in a second. First of all, let's just replace the first part. How many tokens, by the way, is, does, it, does that even save us tokens? That's something we haven't checked. I'm gonna write down our token count uh, before we copy things over. And then, yeah, we're gonna start fixing these things. So I'm gonna just like replace the entire do part function. Or should I? Oh man, this, m no, actually I won't because there's some old stuff in here as well. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like a problem. We have like two different versions of, we split the, the development and now we have like a prototype version of that function. And now we have also like an already further developed version of that function. And so like, you cannot like interchange code from the two of them. We have to be a bit careful here. Um, Let's just do this until here. Yeah, I think all of this can be replaced. And then here is the, we're gonna do the minus tab. Yeah, the tabulation, we can remove the end here. And then when we're drawing, draw, 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 draw. where are we drawing the particles? Uh, yeah, and here. No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah that's correct. Let's run this, it probably is going to be a mistake. No, it worked. I'm kind of shocked. Oh, but wait, 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 we have to still do some other things. Um, we forgot something, there is no weight anymore. We have to find all of the instances of weight. So this is going to be age minus e weight, weight, um, age minus e weight, weight, Okay, these are different different types of weight. Okay, good. Okay, let's try that. Yeah. Weight. Oh, okay. So this should be minus e weight. Oh no, age. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> the explosions look weird. Yeah, this is good now. This is good. Now I know this episode is getting pretty long, but I maybe wanted to, let's do the color animate particles in, in draw. So the idea here is that, um, you know how, this animate color part, let's get this out. And we can put it in the draw function. The reason for this, okay, so um, the reason for this is that it um, we can get away with not defining the color sometimes. So if C tab, yes, then we're gonna use the age, but we assuming that now that we set it up like this, we actually, our all of particles will have an age. Um, and then we're gonna do a mid, C tab, C tab. Yeah, this should, this should be okay. Let's try that. Oh, nope. Um, C tab V. We do not always have a C tab V. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let's get this one out. And let's put it in here. Okay, and now what we can do is here. Uh, this is, see, we can get, get away with just removing this and we should be fine. And equally, we can um, remove the color here as well. When we're spawning here, we can just remove this. Five tokens. 
and it still works. And then here as well, another five tokens. And even here, yeah, even here we can remove this. The reason is previously we, even if we have like color animation, we still had to define like the first color because you sometimes could maybe draw a particle before it had a opportunity to run the update function. But now that we are animating the color um, before we draw, we do that when we're drawing it, um, it just allows us to not define the color because we know that if there is a color animation happening, then the color will get set as we animate the color. And that's why we don't have to define the color because it will get set by this little piece of code anyway before it gets drawn to the screen. Previously, if we didn't define the color and we start, wanted to draw the particle, the particle would look black or there would be an error. And that solves the problem. Let us move on to the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. Yes, yes, yes. So the doggy zone, like if you look at this, we did the color animate particles already. Um, we have sprite space. We want to create the, the tool for the sprite stuff, but actually um, I'd like to move on with the cool stuff with having action on the screen. We um, spend a lot of time trying setup systems, trying to set up, you know, the explosions, everything, working on individual parts, but we spend very little time on working in actual game. So I would love to prioritize having an enemy on the screen and hitting the enemy and so forth. I want to prioritize this rather than working on another tool, right? So I want to, uh, the next thing I want to be doing is have an enemy and make it spawn and so forth. And if you, like to the first challenge in the doggy zone is going to be working on this making uh, uh making an enemy show up and make it maybe move maybe even work on the collision detection all stuff that we are familiar with from the basic shmup tutorial but now applied to advanced shmup tutorial the second goal the second task for the doggy zone if you like to want to choose that is what about the tool though right like you start working on a tool maybe think about how you would create a tool that will allow you to edit, you know, this mice per function. That's kind of like for all of you advanced people out there. I know some people are already working on their own tools. For now, we're gonna move on to that place, to that space at the end of each episode where I will say a big thank you to all of the people at coffee.com slash lazydevs who are supporting this show, who are making this show possible. And, you know, you could watch just, you know, just like the next episode of the series if you're supporting um, the show on coffee because the supporters on coffee get to watch episodes before they are released on YouTube. And also this time I also wanted to show because people are, you know, catching up with all the explosion episodes and are creating incredible stuff down in Discord. I want to show you this beautiful animation. Doesn't it look just amazing? This is from Alice from Discord and she's been like owning bones. She just took the blob explosion code and pushed it to the next level, used some custom uh, palette uh, gradients and so forth and added like a lot of noise, like even more extreme patterns to the blobs. This looks so incredible. I'm really impressed by this and I think everybody in Discord is like, wow. <laughs> This is, this is incredible. This makes me really excited about, you know, what people will do with this tutorial. Thank you so much for sharing, Alice. This is incredible. I'm looking forward to see you again. Yes, yes, yes. So we did the small stuff. Next episode, I want to see an enemy. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.